Welcome to the Kings Beat Podcast. I am James Ham, Kings Insider for ESPN 1320 and the Kings Beat. I promised we'd do something different this week, and we are. Uh, as opposed to Sean and Brendan joining me for this second podcast of the week, I actually have brought in a an amazing guest all the way from Portugal. Uh, we've got Ricardo Brito Reyes uh, here with us. Uh, Ricardo, what's going on, man? How are you? It's good to see you. Uh, you were out here in Sacramento, and it's uh, you were just a breath of fresh air to have here in Sacramento, and, it, and it's good to see your your smiling face. Yeah, it's great to be here, James. Thank you, first of all, for the invitation. Um, I got I got to thank you uh, again because you were the best host I could have had uh, during my my time in Sacramento. I was there in the United States for two weeks in Los Angeles, Sacramento, and San Francisco, but mainly in Sacramento to watch uh, Nimi play. And uh, you just uh, you you picked me up when I couldn't get a ride. You did you did everything paid for lunch. You did everything. I use your material, so so um, it's good. It's good. It was a, a great time. I have to thank you a lot. Uh, but I I I don't forget. Uh, I've never forgotten that the first time you you talked about me in this podcast, you called me the pissed guy from Portugal. So I've got that in the back of my head. <laughs> You were the piss guy in Portugal. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So uh, for those of you, uh, like, we'll just, we'll tell the story. Uh, Ricardo came out to hang out to, to, you know, be here in Sacramento with Nimi. Uh, and the Stockton Kings, they actually, they work out at the old practice facility at the, what used to be the Arco property. Um, uh the building formerly known as Arco Arco two Arco arena is demolished, but the practice facility is still there and the business offices are still there. So they not only practice at the practice facility and have all their weight room and all that stuff. But on top of that, the, all the business offices for the Stockton Kings are at that old building. And it's uh, when you come from Portugal, um, you take Ubers and you do what you normally yeah. would do when you travel. Well, no one knows the address for the actual building. And if anyone has been out there in the last couple of months, it's overgrown. It's it, like the parking lot is trashed. And a lot of the businesses have kind of closed up around what used to be the arena and you can't even really see it. So Ricardo kept having uh, Uber drivers who couldn't find him and, and like would just like give up and, and they were just going to leave you there on the street and is and it, it just mere it was raining it was raining cats and dogs uh, yeah it was pouring rain i was soaking wet and the, the uber driver just said no it's here the 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 map is telling me to leave you here okay just leave me here i'll stay <laughs> so there's nothing here <laughs> so i had to ask you to pick me up and you were the best i i was down at the arena and yeah i'm like hey i'm right down the street i'll just come get you it's not that big of a deal you actually like brendan lives over in your in that neck of the woods um and brendan of course got in a minor car accident early in the season but it took him forever to get everything cleared up so um i i've made plenty of trips to natomas to pick up brendan as has frankie cardicelli so we know the area well and that's a building that i drove to every day for i don't know 6 years so, and the practice facility I was at all the time. Um, but, you know, when you came out here, what, what was your takeaway from the experience of, of uh, USA basketball, of even the G League basketball? Uh, you know, how different is it from what you experience in Europe? Well, I, I got to give you context before because I've never, I've never been to the States before. So it was my first time in the States. Um, and my, my connection to basketball goes back to when I was a young kid. I played basketball, but 16 years old, I, I broke my foot, so I couldn't play, I couldn't play basketball anymore. Uh, I studied journalism, communications, so I decided to go to jur sports journalism, and I've been connected to, to basketball ever since. So um, in, my, in my mind, basketball, the NBA, it's just... Uh, Something from my from my youth that brings me back to my my childish memories. Uh, so it was a big dream to go there and to watch an NBA game. But I had the chance to go um, uh, professionally. Professionally, I, I went to work. I went to do some some interviews, reporting for my my job. Um, so it was 
uh, I had I had some stuff that I had to do, but every once in a while I I was inside an NBA arena and I just couldn't uh, not be completely overwhelmed by the experience of uh, of watching the NBA game for for the first time live. So and I've seen uh, thousands and thousands of NBA games as a fan and now working because I, I call games for Portuguese TV. So the experience was uh, incredible. And for me as a journalist, the um, the the thing I cherish the, the most is the 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 international and the American journalists I've met uh, while I was there because um, the, the conversations on the press room, um, before press conferences, uh, that's something that added the most value to me as a professional. So I cherish, I cherish, I cherish that in a very special place in my heart. And uh, it was a magnificent experience. I couldn't stop. I, I was there for uh, 12 days and I saw seven games between NBA games and G League games. I, I had a, a couple of adventures, I can tell you maybe, but uh, it was a, a great experience. The best uh, trip I've ever done in my life and it was for work. So it was incredible. That's amazing. Um, so for people who don't know what uh, Ricardo does in, in Portugal is he stays up all night long calling games, calling live NBA games right. in Portuguese, right? So, so explain what your night is and what what's your total now? You're at like fourteen hundred games that you've called. No, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred games. Twelve hundred. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing it for ten years now, uh, and it's a, it's a long story. When I was a kid, I was uh, I believe twelve years old. I would I used to watch NBA games in Portuguese TV. We would only broadcast one game per week, and it was not live. It was always broadcasted back in the 90s um, on Saturday, 2 p.m., and it was a game that uh, was played two or three days ago. So it was, um, but there was no internet. There was nothing. We didn't know what, what happened. So that the, that was the only thing we, we had uh, regarding the NBA. And the, um, the, the guys that called games back then, uh, they sometimes they missed the the um, the nicknames, the players' nicknames. And I was a kid. I was a kid. I had a video game from the first video games that there there ever was. And I I wrote a letter, so a written letter, not not in the computer. I wrote a letter with several pages with the correct nicknames for all 450 players in the NBA <laughs> as a 12-year-old kid. And I sent that letter to the, to the TV studio. And uh, in one game, the, 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 the broadcaster that was calling the game said, well, we, this week we, we got a letter here. We got to apologize to 12-year-old Ricardo because he was pissed. There you go, the pissed guy from Portugal. I was the pissed See? kid from Portugal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I gotta apologize because uh, we've been missing uh, some some nicknames, and he helped us out with the the list of all nicknames from all players. Um, and uh, I would have known. Uh, many years later, I met these guys in person, and now I'm doing their job. I'm calling games in Portuguese TV. So it's it was an incredible incredible story. So yeah, I stay up all night. Um, we are six guys here. Uh, there's only one TV station here in Portugal that broadcasts NBA games. Uh, not only NBA games, we broadcast EuroLeague games, uh, Euro Cup games, Champion League games. We have tons of uh, competitions that we broadcast here. Uh, but regarding the NBA, we have always every night two to three games live that we we broadcast. So I work almost every night no 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 holidays no rest from october 15 to june to the end of june we are always working uh, every night and the, the games are not at 7 p.m just like you guys there the games here start the east coast games start at midnight uh, the west coast games like sacramento los angeles they start 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m., so they finish 6, 6.30 a.m. If there is no overtime, I did, I've done games uh, in Los Angeles that had double overtimes, 
So when I get out of the station, of the TV station, I get in the middle of traffic because people want to go to work and I'm trying to get home to, to get some sleep. So, um, and then that's not my, my only job because at 10 a.m. I have to be where I am now in the Portuguese Bas Basketball Federation because I'm the head of communications here. Um, so that's why I always, always uh, finish my, my NBA game saying that sleeping is overrated because that's what I do. I just don't sleep. I'll sleep when I, I'll die. That's right. You'll sleep when you die. Um, and then on top of that, you have your own sub stack, right? Yeah. Okay. And what is, what is your sub stack so people can actually, if they, they want to check out your work in, in Portuguese? Yeah, it's in Portuguese. So, but I, I have, um, uh, it's, uh, it's called Borracha Laranja. It's in Portuguese. It means uh, if I have, if I can make a, a rough translation, it's um, uh, orange leather, just a reference to basketball, to the basketball. Cool. Yep. Okay. So, um, and what I do is uh, keep people posted about NIMI, everything that happens with NIMI, with the Portuguese players in Europe and all over the world, international play, uh, Portuguese players from the national team. Uh, we have a, a new kid now that is going to be eligible to in the 2024 NBA draft is considered one of the top European prospects. Uh, so he's probably going to be the second uh, Portuguese player in the NBA. Nimi, Nimi was first. Um, and then I keep people posted about the NBA because the, the NBA has grown so much here in Portugal. There, I know a lot of people that don't like uh, or don't see Portuguese or European basketball, but absolutely love NBA basketball. And you, we can, we can understand why. There's the narratives. There's uh, the 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 media focus is always on the players more than the team. So there's a lot of stories uh, around the the players, and and that's why in the NBA markets, since David Stern was the commissioner of the league, markets the league just like. Uh, no one else. So uh, I can understand it. So it's the suspect has been grown tremendously. Um, I started a YouTube channel. I've got uh, my own website to where people can see exclusive uh, content. Um, me and 15 other people here in Portugal write uh, scouting reports. We, we do everything just in Portuguese. Uh, but um, we, we try to uh, promote basketball because Portugal as Europe is a, a soccer country and a soccer continent, continent. So um, I'm, I'm trying to, to um, promote basketball because uh, everything we can do for basketball is very important here because the focus is only soccer. Yeah, that's a, it's crazy because, I mean, of course, Namias is your first, you know, NBA player. So you can see, like, why there would be some sort of disconnect. Um, also, you know, I, I, I love watching soccer, uh, and I know how big it is in Portugal, how, you know, especially you get to, uh, Euro cup or, or the world cup. I mean, you guys are always like a huge, huge player in everything that's, you know, in the big tournaments. Um, but, uh, when you talk about sort of the, you know, again, what you do staying up all night, it, it affords you like the opportunity to watch like some of these incredible players that, that, you know, you couldn't watch when you were a kid. Right. Um, yeah. How, when you came out and you, you hung out with Nimi or when you're there in, in Portugal and you're hanging out with Nimi, like how has he adjusted? How has he taken in all of this stuff? Because you're, you've been a basketball junkie. He seems like he's a kid who just all of a sudden grew and grew and grew and became a basketball player. Um, and, you know, it's sort of like you, it's hard to be a goalie in soccer or it's hard to play soccer when the only position they'll let you play is goalie. And, uh, and that like when you're seven foot, whatever, that's all they're ever going to let him do. Uh, but like, what has been your experience of like having these communications with him? Yeah. I, I talk with Nimi almost uh, every week. Uh, we, we text each other. Um, and um, it's incredible because the, 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 the main thing about Nimi is how mature he is for his age. Um, we never had a Portuguese guy in the NBA. We had one guy um, that uh, is considered the Portuguese goat. Uh, he, he was a guard. He could shoot from half court. He was an amazing player from um, a team here in Lisbon, in the Portugal 
Portuguese capital, and um, he he had everything uh, signed to join a Canadian team that was going to um, start in the NBA in a, an expansion. So he had everything to to go there back in the 90s. But then something went wrong with the team. That didn't happen. It was before uh, the Vancouver Grizzlies uh, appeared in the NBA. So that didn't happen. So And the, this guy never never played in the NBA. And we've had a couple of more players that went to the, the, the NBA draft process that uh, practiced, practiced on teams but didn't make it to the league. So Nimi... Um, being drafted, being the first guy, is something that we never even believed. And even guys that have been living uh, and working around basketball their whole life, their whole lives, like me, uh, we just had our mindsets that it would be impossible for a Portuguese player to make it to the NBA because we never had that, that experience. Uh, so we didn't have hope. And the one thing good about Nimi is that he never heard everybody that told him, ah, you won't make it there. It's impossible to make it there. You started playing too late. Uh, um, it's, it's not for Portuguese. We are, we are, we, we, our faith is never a good thing. We, we are always pessimists here in Portugal. So you won't make <laughs> it there. And he just didn't care. He said, no, I'll make it there. And, he worked, he worked, he worked his ass off, and then he made it. And when he made it, he went to a, a Utah State College. It's not a big college, so uh, it's a mid-level college. And it's, even, then, even then, he said, oh, okay, it's not the best college maybe to showcase your talent to the NBA. But suddenly he starts collecting achievements. He's defensive player of the year every year in um, Mountain West. And then he was one of the four finalists for Defensive Player of the Year in the, the NCAA, the whole country, mm -hmm. more than 300 colleges, Division One. He was one of four players, uh, finalists for Defensive Player of the Year, with the other three being Davion Mitchell, that won the award, um, Evan Mobley, and I don't remember the other guy. So that was impressive. And, now, and then we started to believe, okay, he's being referenced with guys that are going going picked on the lottery, going going to be picked in the draft. Maybe a team thinks they'll need a big that can defend. Maybe they see an opportunity. Uh, but we didn't know if his offensive game was not very polished for the NBA, if he was considered just a, a one-way guy. Um, so there, there, there were always lots of doubts, but doubts that because we historically – Never had a player in the NBA, and that's the maybe the the biggest reason I admire Nimi because he never, never, never pushed back. He never quit. He always kept working, 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 and he made it. So, and it's all it's all on him. It's all on him. Now you see him as the player he is now, but you've known Nimi for a long time. Um, when the Kings first got him, like I watched him walk into like the the press conference when he was drafted and uh, like he was in Sacramento and he's walking around and I'm like, Oh man, he's got a lot of work to do. I mean, he's huge. That, that is one gigantic young man, but you could tell like right away, like physically that like he just needed a lot of work. And the transformation I've seen is, is crazy because he no longer is dragging around his lower half. He's really worked hard on his core. Uh, he's trimmed down. He's absolutely ripped. Um, you know, he's a guy who's who's taken this on as as his profession. This is his job now to be an NBA player. And I, I just want to know from your perspective, how have you seen him grow? Because uh, like it's got to be really interesting for you because you've known him since he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, and as a kid, his his nickname when he started playing was uh, Broomstick, because that's all he was. He was just going around from up and down the court, just a guy that couldn't even that didn't know how to run. He didn't know how to run, uh, so he had to learn how to run, how to he had to understand he had to understand the game because his his older sister was playing basketball. That's why he went to see. 
um, the practices, and then a, a coach invited him to to play because he was playing soccer because before, um, and uh, to see him, to see the growth in him, to see how he has perfected uh, his craft, how he works on his craft, the way that he understands that he can't be put in a box and someone tells him you are going to be a rim protector, a defensive center, a defensive minded center. And he doesn't want to be that. That one thing that I I was maybe a little afraid was in the beginning of this season, uh, in the Stockton Kings Media Day, he said that his goal for the season was to dominate offensively just like he does defensively. I was. I thought there was a risky choice of words. Dominate offensively, um, and there you see it. It's me because I, maybe I was a pessimist. Maybe I was trying not to 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 see him um, don't reach that uh, don't reach that potential. But he sees it. He works on it, and. Uh, he understands that he can be a different center if he develops some skills that normally centers don't have this developed, just like his passing skills. Uh, something that happened in Utah State when uh, Sam Merrill went to, to the NBA and suddenly Mimi was the centerpiece of the team and the, the, the ball was always going inside when they got to the offensive side of the floor. And so he got double team every time. And with double teams, he gets reps, reps and reps, being double team, double team, and having to make decisions, being double team. Okay, the double team is coming from the, the baseline. Okay, what I got to do? I got to look over my shoulder, try to see the guy in the far corner. It's coming from the top. Okay, what's the first pass I have? Is it the pass I want or is it the pass the other team wants me to make? Uh, so that kinds of decisions, th those reps that he had in college, was something that allowed him to perfect his passing uh, decision, passing ability, passing technique, the timing of the pass. Um, and that's a skill that I think he has that some centers in the NBA don't have. That's something I believe that can make a difference for him because he's not an outside shooter, uh, at least in volume. You know, he, he'll always try uh, a three yeah. or two, and he can shoot, but you are not expecting Mimi to uh, shoot or to score four or five threes in a game. You know that he's if he's open, he won't hesitate. He will shoot it, and if he scores the first, he will try the second one. But he is so obsessed with efficiency, not um, throwing the ball away, not making turnovers, not. Uh, um, the using the the shooting the three and maybe not doing the best play for the team which which could be allowing another guy to be open understanding his gravity the way that affects the other team and then understanding what's the, de the decisions he has to make so is a very unselfish player he knows he can attract attention uh, and with that he can open the game for everybody else and that's one of the things that when i was there I realized talking with other guys, with Keon, with Wes, Iwundu, uh, they really value his um, the, the ability of him not being selfish, his unselfishness, uh, because they they benefit from him being on the floor, attracting so much attention. They'll, they'll be open to shoot threes, to cut to the rim, and he will find a way to get the ball to them. So and with that, they then they want to... Uh, Give him something to eat too. So maybe the next possession, they instead of it's the G League, they want to try to make it to the NBA. They instead of maybe trying to force um, uh, a drive to the basket. Okay, he gave me the basket, the the possession before. Let me get give him the basket. Maybe try. He's got a mismatch. He's got to eat something too. And they give him the ball back. And that was something that I really liked about the Stockton Kings. It's a, it was a very unselfish team, so kudos to Bobby Jackson and all the, the staff on that team. Um, and with Nimi, yeah, he's, he's not a passing big like Sabonis. Nobody's like Sabonis. Yeah, you got Jokic, Jokic Sabonis, and Sabonis. And you, <laughs> you got nobody else. You got no, no, no other centers that, that can pass like those two guys. So when you got a – maybe that was one of the problems with the, the backup center position. Because no nobody on the team can replicate what Sabonis does, and mm -hmm. if the the other guys on the backcourts on the perimeter uh, are used to play with Sabonis, have 
has reps with Sabonis, being such a great passer. Um, and no one else can replicate that. Yeah, maybe the, the the team won't be able to play at the same level when another center enters the court. So that's a challenge for Mike Brown and the team uh, to, to maybe have a plan A and a plan B, or maybe develop these centers to try to find some ability to replicate what Sabonis does, uh, develop their passing game. And that's why I was very happy that Nimi spent all of the year on the G in the G League. Because the year before, there was uh, around one month, a month and a half, where he was on the main team, just clapping on the end of the bench. He wouldn't play. He didn't get reps. And this year, staying in the, in the G League, and that's something lots of Portuguese didn't understand because it was his second year. They wanted him to have more opportunities in the main team. But yep. the best thing for him this year was to get those reps in the G League. And so we were very happy. And in the end, what, what did happen? He was the second guy in the MVP voting. He was an all-star. Yep. He wasn't there just to go back to Utah, his state where he was in college. No, no, he was there to play. He was the best guy on the Scoot Henderson team. He was the best player on the Scoot, Team Scoot. And he, when everybody was there probably to see the G League Ignite guys, suddenly they were there and they were seeing Luca Garza on one hand and then Mishkera on the other hand. So it was a, a good thing for him. It put him on the map. And I'm sure there are a lot of teams that if they didn't know who Namias was after this year, they know who Namias is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he finished uh, all G League first team. He finished all G League defensive first team. Second and MVP balloting for the G League. I mean, he put up a huge season. I, I talked to uh, to Bobby Jackson about this just briefly, and he told me, he's like, what else could he do? Like, you sent him to Stockton to get better, to do these things. And he went out there and he dominated. He was, he was spectacular this season. He was the reason why they were the one seed and why they had an opportunity to, to win the championship, even though they did have a, they, they lost by two. They couldn't find a basket uh, late in a, in a playoff game and, and fell apart late and, and lost early. Um, but still it was a lot because of Nimi. Now you uh, you actually had the opportunity to hang out with him yesterday or last night, yeah. right? So, yeah. so why don't you tell us what that was about and and how that went? Yeah, he he's here for uh, I think a, a week a vacation. Um, came here to see his family, and even here in vacation, uh, he's obsessed with working. So the first thing he got to do when he was here is find. Uh, a few gyms where he could, it could he could work every day, so it doesn't stop working even on vacation. And um, yeah, we were texting because I'm just finishing the editing of the the reports and the interviews that I did there. They are going to be broadcasted here in TV um, during the NBA Finals, uh, including uh, James Ham's interview. That's that's included in the in those in those amazing. So, so yeah yeah so. Uh, I was texting him and telling him, hey, I'm almost about that. We've lost. Oh, you're coming back. Sorry, Sorry about that. Uh, you're back. OK, go for it. Uh, I was texting Nimi saying I'm just uh, finishing the, the editing on the, um, the stuff I did in the USA. Um, and he said, oh, well, are you on TV? Yeah, I'm on TV. Yeah, hey man, I'm I'm finishing my communications course. Um, maybe I can one day I'll work uh, in on TV. And I was saying, yeah, you want to be in new media, just like Draymond Green. Yeah, you want to you want to you sure you want to go on that route? And he said, yeah, I, I gotta try. It. Yeah, you want to try it? You want to try it tomorrow? Do you wanna you wanna come here? You wanna call a game with me? Uh, and the my my colleague, uh, yeah, why not? Really? Okay, let me just check with the, the editor-in-chief and then I'll try to arrange that. So we, we, I, I made a couple of calls and so he went to the, um, the night uh, news show uh, and then he stayed for the, for the game, which, is, which started 1.30 a.m. here in Portugal and it finished 4 a.m. And when Nimi on the, the second half of the game Every time there was a timeout or between quarters and we had to leave for commercials, he said, man, I don't know how you guys do it. Man, <laughs> I've, had, 
I value the fans that stayed every night to watch me play till 6 a.m. The mo in the morning, even more after this experience. Yeah, and he's obsessed with coffee. He loves coffee, so uh, I think he had four coffees <laughs> for the night. Oh. But he, it was it was a great experience because, um, of course, I was trying to pick his brain, trying to. Um, I, I was a little afraid. Maybe he was a bit conservative, um, trying uh, um, to just uh, say some some cliche stuff but no he really went in depth about the, what the team was, what the both teams were doing um he had a massive laugh when marcus smart flopped so that was that was nice and uh, everybody on twitter was saying yeah we got morgan freeman he he has that that low voice yeah we got morgan freeman calling calling games here in portugal yeah we got it and of course celtics fans were saying no 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 nimi's gotta call every celtic game until the end of the series because the celtics are going to come back from this series yeah it was a great experience he loved it and he's he's got one more year in his communication um degree in uh, utah state so okay. he he's trying to finish that so maybe uh, and we hope maybe 10, 15 years from now when his NBA career finishes, that's what we hope. Maybe you can think about uh, starting a communication career. Awesome. Um, okay, so we wanted to have you on for two reasons. Number one was to talk Nimi because, uh, of course, you are the foremost expert on Nimi Escada in Portugal. And, uh, again, you've known him since he was young. Um, but the other reason is y you mentioned early in the, in the show that you call Euro League and Eurobasket stuff all the time, which means that you've crossed paths, uh, at least watching and calling games with Sasha Vizenkov. Um, just where are you at with Sasha as a prospect? What, it, what have you seen that you like? And to me, the one thing I'll point out is that he just seems to keep getting better. Like he was not a major league prospect like three years ago. And even last year, he was an okay prospect, and it seems like this year he's just taken another step. What are, what has been your impressions of Sasha? Well, I've been calling games for 10 years, so it's been 10 years I've been uh, calling EuroLeague games. Uh, I've been watching Sasha closely. And uh, working here on the Portuguese Basketball Federation, I, I of course, I am close to the Portuguese national team. And th the last summer, Portugal had two massive games against Bulgaria. And so we had a uh, Portuguese team. It, it was a two, uh, it was not uh, on the summer. It was in, on February, in February. So Nimi couldn't make it because he was there. But uh, Vazenkov, he was playing for um, Olympiacos in the EuroLeague. He couldn't play the first game because he was having EuroLeague games. But the second game he came trying to help Bulgaria that really needed a win to, to qualify. Uh, for the next stage, and uh, Portugal won, and Benzenkov was pissed. So uh, I don't know if you will like to share the the, <laughs> the the locker room with Nimi because Nimi will say, "Yeah, Portugal beat you guys." So, but I've been watching Sasha for for a long time. He really developed for for the the past uh, uh, six years since since he's been in Olympiacos again because. He was born in Cyprus. I believe you know his story. He was born in Cyprus. He at 14 years old. He moved to Greece with his parents, uh, and he started playing in Greece. He, he, and then Barcelona um, had him for a few years, three years, and then for the last um, five, five or six years, he's been in Olympiacos in Greece, and he's been developing immensely. In the last couple of, of years, is is passed from the bench to a starting role in Olympiacos and uh, played more and more consistently um, in this uh, last couple of years. So it's been it's been a tremendous development for him to be all EuroLeague first team for the last two years. And this year being the EuroLeague MVP was a tremendous achievement from him. I, I, I believe he can be a really solid uh, player in the NBA. I don't know. I've heard, uh, I hear all the uh, Sacramento related podcasts. I've heard people saying maybe he can be a starter next to uh, Sabonis if Harrison Barnes doesn't come back. Uh, maybe he can come off the bench, play the four, maybe a small ball five. Um, 
Well, I, I don't think he can play small ball five. I, I don't I don't know if he can play that role. But he's a tremendous spacer. He's shooter, a great great shooter. Um, he's got a quick a quick release. He, um, he a very uh, high high IQ player. Um, for example, the past uh, final Euroleague final four last weekend in the um, championship championship game, which was a heartbreaker for Olympiacos. Uh, he, he played against Real Madrid that uh, defended 2-3 zone for uh, long periods of time during the game. And he was the guy on the free throw line extended trying to get the first pass from the, the, the guards and then trying to create, maybe creating for himself because he got a good mid-range shot, maybe passing to skip into the other side, trying to use the dribble. So he's been developed a lot. I remember his uh, early career when the scouting reports say, said that he wasn't great creating off the dribble. Now he, he is a good creator of the dribble also. So, um, yeah, maybe there are some con concerns about his quickness, his defense. Yeah, he's not a very um, lateral. He doesn't have a lot of lateral quickness to 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 um, maybe to the NBA level. To He's a 6'9 guy, so he probably will be defending uh, big three, big small forwards or, or power forwards. But uh, he may have some trouble in the defensive side of the floor but on the offensive side of the floor he's going to be a tremendous player he's a great great shooter you saw he shot from the logo made a couple of three uh, threes in the second half of the game the first half wasn't going very well in the championship game um and even on the the semi-final uh he he was the the best scorer in the team but it it was not not one of his best games of the season i've seen him do, do a lot, lot better. So I hope uh, people in Sacramento don't think that's the player they're gonna get if he indeed goes there. But because the the real Sasha Vesenkov is the one we saw on the final, and that was something that I was really impressed because he didn't hide away from the moment. He wanted to lead his team to 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 victory, to the championship. Um, unfortunately for them. Real has all those vets that really know how to, to finish games. And Sergio Abdul that, that hit that incredible shot. His only two points in the game was the championship winning uh, basket. So, But um, he's, he's a great prospect. I think he can be a really good player in the NBA. I don't want to say role player because maybe in some teams he can be a starter. But for the Sacramento Kings, I think he can be a good role player. I don't know if he will start, but I see him as a, a guy coming off the bench spacing the floor and maybe depending on the matchups maybe he can play with the with the starting units yeah because uh with fox with sabonis you you guys need spacers on the floor and um having kevin Herter, having keegan murray two great shooters if you add another guy like vesenkov he will space the floor even more for those dribble handoffs between uh, sabonis and fox for uh, sabonis driving to to the cup so is a guy that can fit really, really well. I love the honest assessment, like because that's that's what I try to provide for people. Like I watch Sasha play, like I've covered the draft for years. I've covered the NBA for thirteen years. Like you can tell when what players can do and what they can't do, and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And I think that he has potential to be a really good player, uh, but it's in a very specific situation. And so I, I think it's interesting, like. I, like how how he works out we have no idea whether he's going to come over we have no idea but it's good to get some insight on on who he is as as a as a player and and the fact that he's pissed uh you know at, at Mimi you know like I, I think that's funny oh, no, no I know he uh, didn't play those games Mimi didn't play <laughs> yeah yeah okay so I want to finish up with this I uh, can't keep you all day um but uh well I don't know what time is it there um, here uh, it's it's almost 10 30 6 30 p.m 6 30 p.m yeah. and you still got a oh well, oh no you you might have a break yeah. here right yeah tonight i'm going to go home be with my kids have dinner and then i'll go to bed well, that's something oh. i don't do every day <laughs> you'll sleep during the off season <laughs> and when you're dead um, yeah. but this is, yeah, no, this no, is... I can't sleep. I can't sleep really because there's no there's no basketball, so I stay up at all night. My my body is accustomed to staying up, so I, I'm I'm in bed 
I turn to one side, turn to the other side, too, and, and then I watch to the uh, at the clock. It's four four in the morning. Damn, <laughs> in three hours. That be up. <laughs> so that was something that I noticed when I was there because my routine here is okay. I'm gonna call a game at midnight. Uh, it finishes two thirty in the morning. I get home at three. Uh, I get home. I still have adrenaline, adrenaline from calling the mm -hmm. games. And the, okay, I'll sit a bit, watch some West Coast game. Maybe it's the Kings, maybe it's the, the Lakers, the Clippers, I don't care, the Trailblazers. Uh, I'll, I'll watch the games. And I, I watch the game, and occasionally I, I, fall, I, fall, I fall to sleep. Uh, when I was there, and I was on the West Coast, I went to see games. It was, I don't know, 7, seven in the afternoon, 5, 5, 5 p.m., 7 p.m. Finished the game, I went to have a drink. The the bar right next to the to the golden yep. one, and then I thought, okay, that's good. Now I'll have a drink, I'll eat something, and then I'll go home and I will I will I'll watch basketball all night. I didn't realize, so I went home. And then there was no basketball. East Coast East Coast games were all over. West Coast games all over. What am I going to do from 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. in the morning when I finally sleep? So <laughs> I don't know. That's amazing. It's amazing. So I, went uh, back, I love I it. Went back to the bar. I went back to the bar and drank and drank more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you figured out America right there. You just figured it out. <laughs> That's what we do. We just go back to the bar. I, I even built one in my house. I just I just go downstairs to the bar. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, I'm going to finish with this question then. Um, how much have you seen the... The, I, I like to call it the good people of Portugal. H how much have you seen them grow as a fan base watching Namias struggle and, and, and try to get himself into the league? Because I, I know that that's something that I've spent quite a bit of time trying to explain, trying to, trying to put perspective. And, you know, like I, I've gone, I've done interviews with uh, uh, newspapers in Portugal. I've, I've, you know, you and I have talked, um, we talk on Twitter, we talk about it on, um, you know, I write about it on the King's beat. We talk about it on the podcast, but what, what we're trying to do is make sure that people understand that this is a little bit like soccer where you have your, your younger guys that are trying to make it to the big club, but they don't always make it right away. And sometimes they do make it, but then they get buried on the bench and you never hear from them again. And sometimes they get loaned out somewhere else. Like the NBA world is a little different. Um, especially when you see a guy put up, you know, almost 20 points and 10 rebounds and four blocks a game or three blocks a game. Like you're everyone in Portugal is like, well, why isn't he just hit the, with the Kings, the, the big club doing that same exact thing. Uh, but how much have you seen the growth and the understanding of the game change through the eyes of Nimi? Well, I think, uh, of course, like where, uh, as everywhere else in the world, uh, people there are different kinds of fans that follow the game. So uh, there are of course stay up all night. And it, in it, in here in Europe, and I'm not talking only in Portugal because in Portugal, yeah, West Coast games start at 3 a.m. in the morning. In Spain, which is just an hour from us, it, it starts at 4 a.m. If you go to Germany, it starts at 5 a.m. So um, in we we have bad luck, but still, that's not that bad because we are not the worst uh, here in Europe uh, regarding uh, schedules. So, uh, but of course, people have to work in the morning, so most people can follow games live. Some wait and they have league pass or they see it on TV here in Portugal. They go home and they they put it back. They play it back the whole game. But most people, of course, they watch highlights only. They check box scores. And they try to take conclusions out of that. And that's not fair for players because you see Nimi plays about 27 minutes. Everybody goes to Twitter, ah, he only played 27 minutes. Most players in the in the gym, the most two-way players, the players with two-way with two contracts, they always play 32, 33, 34 minutes. Okay, but did you see the game? He had three fouls in the first half. So he didn't play because he had three fouls. So Bobby Jackson... Did have to manage his minutes, so oh, uh, but this in this game he only had uh, seven rebounds. If he doesn't have, if he doesn't post a double double every game, he's never gonna make it. No, but did, did you see the game? He boxes out. He boxes out, and he allows his uh, teammates to get the rebound. So you have to see the games. You have to see the games to understand the work he does. Uh, 
Um, he doesn't get uh, – he, he had a game, 38 points, 18 rebounds against the, the, the Warriors with James Wiseman playing. Everybody was saying, yeah, they – they beat the number two dra- uh, pick in the draft. So, yeah, the Namiya uh, and, and Yeah, the, you, we heard uh, the Hoop Collective with uh, Brian Windhorst and Tim Bontemps and uh, Tim McMahon talking about Namiya because he trashed uh, James Wiseman. And then people hear, uh, hear that podcast and hear, yeah, Namiya is being talked in national podcasts. Uh, we got the Windy talking about Nimi. Yeah, he, why doesn't he go to the 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 main team? Uh, Alex Lyon isn't playing for almost 30 games. Why isn't Nimi playing? So uh, it's really tough, and I don't judge them because it's a, a special. It, it, we can't every not everybody can see the games every single night. Yeah. Not everybody can do it. So only if you see the games you understand. Uh, and even people who see the game, and you know, I, 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 I see every single game of Nimi, even if it's my day off, I see every single game until 6 a.m. in the morning. And there are lots of people that don't work like me, don't don't have the, the privilege to work like me, uh, basketball-related um, work, and they they don't sleep and watch Nimi. And when he doesn't play, yeah, they, they, they get frustrated. They think maybe he should play more minutes. Yeah, I understand that because it's the... Uh, the first guy in the NBA. The, the, we are the little country in the Europe, in the tail of Europe. Uh, the guys that always uh, get beat in basketball, that uh, have soccer, that have a big star in soccer. And people think, yeah, we have Cristiano Ronaldo. The guy that made it had a magnificent, magnificent history, made it from this small country, and now is a superstar. Uh, Nimi is a small guy. He went to the NBA. People think he has to be a superstar. No. He's a great defensive guy. He doesn't have to be defensive player of the year. Yeah, he was a great defensive guy in college. Yeah, maybe the big uh, accomplishment will be get two contracts in the NBA, three contracts in the NBA. If he makes it 10 years in the NBA, that will be a great achievement. Um, yeah, and sometimes we are surprised. He was sec- second most voted in the MVP. I wasn't expecting that, and I work in basketball. Yeah, I... Then I understand, okay, they were the first team, in the, the best record in the, the regular season. Of course, that had impacts in the voting. But I wasn't expecting that because people normally, historically, give this kind of awards to, to guys who score a lot, to have big numbers. Yeah, he had good numbers, uh, but there were guys that scored way more than him. There were guys yeah. scoring 40 points almost every night. So, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. So I'm just like you. Uh, I'm trying to balance this because I want to inform people. Don't want to hype them up too much. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I post Nimi stuff. I want everybody to see. Nobody can lose what Nimi does. Uh, and that's why I, I keep posting everything about Nimi. Uh, on the other hand, I know I have to be very, very careful with the words I use because if I hype them too much, people will start... Uh, tagging the Sacramento Kings, uh, uh, saying uh, that Mike Brown doesn't like him, the saying that uh, Alex Lan doesn't doesn't uh, he doesn't play. How come Nimi is not playing in front of Alex Lan? Yeah, you gotta understand that um, everybody is grinding, everybody's trying trying to get a chance. Yeah, Richard Holmes was in the starting unit. He did. He came out of the rotation. That doesn't mean he is not someone that the the staff is taking under consideration to play in some games because in some games he will be a guy that uh, his skills will be highly appreciated and be needed by the team so mm-hmm. nimi had his had his shots he had his opportunities he played well in his opportunities he didn't do everything well and that's something that's difficult for people to see because you have to see the games because if you wake up in the morning, you go to the box car, you see he played 10 minutes with the Lakers. How did he do? He played, you, he made 10 points against the Lakers, five on five on field goals. Let's see the highlights. Five dunks. Yeah, he defended LeBron in a, and they got a steal. And the, the, there was a fast break and he dunked. Wow, how doesn't he play? How doesn't he play alongside Sabonis? Yeah, he doesn't play alongside Sabonis because Sabonis played with Miles Turner, which is a guy that can space the floor. And that didn't work. So he won't play against with Sabonis. Sabonis won't be playing with a with another big man that doesn't shoot. So 
that's something that we try to explain. Obviously, we want people to be excited. We have our Portuguese guy in the NBA, but we have also to in, to inform him. Um, uh, I, I don't use the expression educate them, uh, but uh, inform them about what Nini is doing uh, and trying to make sure everybody is the is taking out their Portuguese glasses and trying to see everything uh, and trying to see that. Yeah, for example, I I, I said that lots of times this during this year calling games alex led is ukrainian uh, his father was lost he, he couldn't find the contact with his father for two or three weeks yeah he was there working every day mimi told me he was working every day uh never complained never said nothing didn't play was in the end of the rotation out of the rotation but he was working his ass every day And what I, type, what I try to tell people is put yourself in Mike Brown's shoes. You see a guy that doesn't know, he has a, a war in his home country, probably his beloved ones, some are being highly affected by what's happening in Ukraine. He doesn't know nothing from his father for two or three weeks. Of course, he's concerned with that. Maybe he shouldn't even be practicing. He should be trying to, uh, do, try to find a way to help his family, Uh, no, he's practicing every single day. The Kings make it to the playoffs. They have an opportunity maybe to uh, give some minutes to guys that weren't playing so much. I understand he's playing Alex Lamb. His commitment has to be uh, recognized. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And, and so that's something I try to do. Inform people, trying to to make them see, yeah, Mike Brown was coach of the year. How can you say he's not a good coach because he doesn't play Nimi? But the, the team didn't make it to the playoffs seven, for 17 years. They are third place in the West. They have the Lakers behind them. They have the Clippers behind them. They have the champions, Warriors, the, behind them. How can you say he's, bad, he's a bad coach? Come on. So that's that's what I, I was trying to do this all, the, all this year for people that maybe needed uh, to uh, a bit more explanations. And um, and Nimi did his job. Okay, he had his opportunity. He did a good job. You know, and he, of course, he has something he has to work and be better. He came to the G League and did his job. Uh, did his numbers. Was not selfish. Played within the system of the team. Uh, he, he says that uh, Bobby Jackson, Mike Brown, the, they are always talking about what he has to do, what he has to get better, what he's been doing good. So he understands that the staff in the main team is looking at him and um, he, he sees that his work is being recognized and being valued. And that's the most important. So he feels that he's done everything he could to uh, show that he has developed and that he, he, he did everything that he could uh, to, to make it there, to make a, a, to trying to get a spot in the rotation. Uh, but you know the business of the NBA. And that's something Nimi understands. He, uh, one of the questions I asked him in my one-hour interview I did there is, yeah, you, you see a lot of guys you played with get waived, get traded. Are you ready? If uh, Wojnarowski or Shams uh, he, breaks the news, yeah, the Mies Kere is getting traded to somewhere else. And he said, yeah, why, why should I, shouldn't I be ready? It happens to literally everybody. So, yeah, I'm ready. It might happen one day. So he's incredible. He's the way he's matured um, and the way he's ready for everything that happens and the way that he doesn't get frustrated with something that he could have thought that it doesn't go the way that he expected. It's, it's something that I really appreciate about Nimi. Uh, and so that's why I'm completely sure that he will make it because he do just doesn't give up. Maybe it's the Sacramento Kings. Maybe it isn't, but he will make it. All right. I, I, I agree. I fully like, he's got the body, he's got the work ethic. Um, you know, I, I, he's got a lot of intangibles and I, I, I dig him. He's a great young, uh, a great young dude. I like doing the little videos where I'm like, Hey, talk to the good people of Portugal. And he starts speaking in Portuguese. To, I, I love it. And people are like, Oh my gosh, you even know what he says. I don't know what he says. 
Like, I have no idea. Like, he, like you, I think you've even like transcribed one or two of them for me. Like, hey, this is what he said. Like, oh, sweet. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah, like, I, I'm sure he's not going to say something silly and then have it go. No, like, he won't. He won't. No, he won't. He won't, of course. So, uh, all right. Hey, man, it's been an absolute pr uh, pleasure having you on. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your day. I know your your life is chaotic and crazy, uh, but thanks for for jumping on. And uh, we'll get this thing up, and uh, it, it's good. We're we're doing something different here at the King's Beat. We're gonna start doing interviews like this, uh, and we'll go all over the all over the map if we have to 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 bring in some interesting guests, so people have a a little bit of a different perspective on what's happening in the game. So, Ricardo, thanks for uh, for coming on it and being our, our test subject with the uh, the new interview segment of the King's Beat. Yeah, thank you so much for the invitation. I'll, I'll, always, I'll always find time for you. Maybe uh, it won't be the schedule you want, but I'll find some time. <laughs> okay? So you, right. you, can always, you can always count on me. All right. So that is Ricardo uh, Brito Reyes uh, from Portugal. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for tuning into the King's Beat podcast. We'll see you very soon.